الله اكبر The jihadi kumbakits who have been functioning as breeding sows for the murderers and rapists in ISIS have decided that war isn't fun if you're not winning. So now they want to come back home to the warm and cozy safety generously provided for them by we, the gullible European Kafirs. The Swedish defenders of these women vary, but the general culprits seem to be a mix of middle-aged social democrat men with thinning hairlines all attempting to out-tolerate each other and young leftist women working for newspapers that nobody reads and only survive due to generous government grants who are harping on about us needing to respect our laws about citizenship. This is, by the way, coming from the same frigid twats who froth with rage at the sheer thought of not allowing in illegal immigrants, but now suddenly they've become vanguards in the defense of Sweden's legal definition of citizenship. The British government have momentarily broken their shared habit with Sweden of bending over and spreading their cheeks for salafists, and they've actually tore up the citizenship of the ISIS groupie Shamima Begum only to immediately get stuck in the shit pits of the idiotic international laws which forbid nations from making traitors stateless, at the great expense of the safety for all of their own law-abiding citizens, I should add. But the British Home Secretary, in my view, acted admirably on this specific issue and has worked hard to boot Begum out permanently since she clearly despises Britain and has even called the Manchester Arena suicide bombing justified. She also considers decapitation of infidels, meaning yours truly and you, my European brothers and sisters, to be A-OK, -okay, since it is permitted according to an illiterate warlord with a taste for laying kids. That is some quality citizen material right there, with an infallible moral compass as well. Now since Sweden and Britain have been shoulder to shoulder in the race to run our nations into the grounds through multiculturalism censorship and bending over backwards to appease an ever-growing self-segregating Muslim population, I believe that I'm being modest in saying that Sweden has in the act of botching the handling of returning ISIS terrorists sprinted far ahead of Britain. This being Britain, which is a nation that is having its prisons run by jihadi recruiters. But despite that, Britain far outdoes Sweden when it comes to their ability to face terror threats. We are, despite the Stockholm attack and despite constant warnings from our Swedish security police, still rubbing the crust out of our eyes. This was pointed out on one of Sweden's most well-known programs with live debates by Hanif Bali. I think it would be so difficult for them to come here. They have actually been able to get the right to actually call themselves Swedish. Bali is one of the very few members of parliament that is actually equipped with both a functioning brain and a pair of balls. As he hammered primarily the social democrats for being too late on stopping and convicting any ISIS returnees, he demanded that those in our government looked into the eyes of the Swedish people, took responsibility and apologized for their major failures. Har noll av de som varit anslutna till IS blivit dömda. Noll. Och det här har skett i flera år nu. Och vi har inte gjort någonting. Och det är inte så att det varit brist på förslag. Jag kom med förslag redan 2015 om att vi skulle ändra landsförräderilagstiftningen så de kan dömas som landsförrädare. Men vi gjorde inget. Det enda som finns kvar för politikerna att göra det är att titta in i de här kamerorna och be om ursäkt. Det är det enda alternativet som tyvärr finns kvar. Mm. It was an admirable thing to call for, but just like the idea that our Minister of Social Security would stop pissing off foreign nations, it is something that is just not very likely to happen. And I know that some of my fellow Swedes are here going to bitch about that Bali has some pretty stupid views in the past, but given the quality, or should I say complete lack of quality, of our Swedish politicians, we all perhaps should stop being so goddamn petty and make do with the little that we've been given. After Bali confronted the people who let this whole mess turn into the complete and utter joke that Swedish border security and anti-terror effort are today, he was only given as a reply that the moderate party, of which Bali is a member, were also lousy at counteracting terrorism during their time in government. So it was basically just a pointed finger. No solutions or ideas for improvement, just a, but you guys messed it up before we did. Very mature and constructive. After that pathetic exchange, everything quickly descended even further after having invited this thing into the conversation. 
Now, public service in Sweden is heavily politically partisan and should be immediately scrapped since they fail to uphold the required political nonpartisanship. They invite an overwhelmingly high amount of social democrats, communists and feminists to their debate and you're lucky if they have even a single non-red or green activist on their panels. I rarely find myself nodding to the phrase taxation is theft, but regarding Swedish public service I couldn't agree more. So this suckler of soy milk was presented as just being some random lawyer who possesses a modicum of insight on the issue and didn't really have a dog in the race, but of course that was a lie. The guy is a communist. And imagine my shock when he immediately accuses Bali of being a populist and simplistic in his suggested solutions, only to right after continuing to do what these fuckers always do, he obfuscates. This limp-wristed little comrade, who's still waiting for his balls to drop, began to moan about how it's a complex issue, but he somehow still was able to assure the viewer that Sweden's government is actually, contrary to all existing evidence showing the complete opposite, really tough on terrorists. Tough as in giving them a max of six years in prison and other life-shattering sentences. Sentences of which will only have two-thirds of their time served. This shortening of jail time happens no matter what, by the way. For example, this criminal in Sweden who called female jailers whores and sluts, spat at people and had fits of rage, still got released prematurely despite having been a violent asshole during his entire time in prison. Because that is standard procedure in Sweden. We like to be nice towards our prisoners. But of course, just months later, when he actually should have still been in a Swedish prison, this inbred sociopath got released, traveled over the border to Norway, and during a robbery, stabbed a Norwegian citizen to death in Oslo. Norway's former attorney general then asked what the hell we were doing with our criminals in Sweden, to which there didn't really exist any good answer. Six years for terrorism is nothing. Ten years is the maximum amount of jail time you can receive in Sweden for savagely raping someone, and even in some cases that is too low. Six years for burning a person alive is just ridiculous. This pinko lawyer and his dishonest behavior mirrors what is now all over the internet. So-called journalists write these disgusting opinion pieces where they preach to people about the need to, I quote, think about their children, or... Think about the poor terrorists that have been brainwashed. And with a nearly biblical mannerism, they keep pleading to the public, saying that you have to forgive them, for they did not know what they signed up for. The truth that Shamima Begum, for instance, knew for a fact exactly what ISIS were up to when she traveled down is rarely mentioned. Since 2014, ISIS have been pumping out a steady stream of material in a propaganda war against the West, which they have effectively won. Their films are everywhere. They're spread on Facebook and on other social media. You cannot be so goddamn ignorant and sheltered that you have no idea who ISIS were, what they stood for, and what they were doing. And of course, Begum knew. She knew that they cut off people's heads and even said that she was okay with it because it was okay with Islam. So only a pathological idiot would get up on the gallows and fight to defend these heaps of shit who are now whining about wanting to come home. As if this country ever was their home, and not just a warm little haven where they could regroup, recruit, and live well off what the busy and gullible little Swedes kept feeding them. Home. Fuck off. The ramifications of this sickening and straight up bizarre behavior from the tolerant Swedes, or Brits for that matter, wailing for a safe return for some of the most worthless pieces of filth on the planet, are many and they are terrible. I'm going to mention one which might actually change the minds of some of the people who are currently in favor of this humane and forgiving attitude regarding these butchers and rapists. Here it goes. You often hear people say that racism is the result of fear. That may or may not be true, but why would fear cause us to be racist? The idea stems from the old truth that we hate what we fear. We hate spiders, we hate snakes because we're afraid of them. Would you who are defending ISIS terrorists agree with that we hate what we fear? Never mind that we are evolutionary predisposed to be xenophobic, I'm still just gonna assume for the sake of argument that you agree with that statement. Now how can we reduce the hate for other people if it comes from fear? Well the correct answer is not to allow in staggering amounts of extremely dangerous murderers and rapists who hate your guts back into this country. And the correct answer is not to give them new identities and mix them in with the groups of people who you, the tolerant and progressive anti-racist, want people not to be afraid of. 
And that would be your favorite pets, the people with an immigrant background coming primarily from the Middle East. Because as we all know, people are often viewed as being bigots for fearing people from the Middle East and worrying about them being terrorists, but now due to the defending of actual terrorists returning home, you the tolerant and understanding anti-racists are adding a very real layer of validity to these concerns. Because if this shit keeps going on and we're okay with the idea of letting terrorists back into our countries, you could actually be walking past the terrorists when you're on your way to your local supermarket. You could have someone who's murdered Christians standing behind you when you're taking out money from an ATM machine. And you could have your UPS package delivered by a man who raped your CD6 slaves for months on end. The paranoia, the pressure which will keep on building among the people in Sweden and elsewhere in Europe, is going to go through the fucking roof. With these tolerant ideas about understanding, forgiveness and compassion, that pressure cooker of paranoia and fear is going to be our reality. New Zealand is going to be nothing if we have several years of that type of environment. And hey, let's not forget about the actual refugees who we have living here. Real refugees, I'm not talking about economic migrants. It has to be a very special experience to be walking down a street in Sweden only to see the person who raped, mutilated and murdered your entire family back in Syria. We pride ourselves with bringing in the poor and the helpless like we're saving an abandoned puppy who's been left out in the rain. But when now new victims, new poor people who have been tricked into joining ISIS are spotted on the horizon, the puppy simply isn't that interesting anymore. Listen, you do not treat people this way. You do not wave a fucking welcome flag from the other end of the world to people who are actual genuine refugees, make them struggle all the way up to Sweden, only to just a couple of years later start bringing in the people they fled from. I cannot describe with words what a disgusting and cruel act that is. I'm of the opinion that Sweden should have never gotten involved in this whole let's save the entire Middle East business, but now that the damage has already been done and has been done for years, we at least can try to spare the people who you loving humanists basically tricked into coming here for your own sanctimonious self-ingrandizing from having to live neighbors with the people who slaughtered their families and burned down their homes. Norway made it illegal in 2013 to be a member of a terrorist organization and to provide them with resources, but we cannot get this done even now since a suggested counterterrorism law criminalizing membership of terrorist groups didn't pass our Council of Legislation. Because it would, according to the Council, infringe upon our constitutional right of freedom of association. <laughs> uh, okay, your right to be a member of ISIS is protected under the same Swedish constitutional law which makes sure that you have the right to join the Boy Scouts or Greenpeace. So colluding with a foreign military group who teach you how to commit terror attacks is apparently, according to this council, just as kosher as wanting to protect the humpback whales or learning how to dig a cat hole in the forest. Norway has a max sentence of 20 plus years in jail for acts of terrorism, while Sweden had in the bill, which has now been rejected, a max sentence of 6 years, which I mentioned earlier. And it is pathetic. In Sweden you get six months for recruiting people for ISIS, in Norway you get a minimum of three years in prison. I'm talking a lot about Norway here, since if our government would have simply pulled a copy and paste on Norway's laws, we would have been so much better off. And it's funny because our government in 2018 completely ignored the critique from the Council of Legislation aimed at their proposed bill, which was a complete mess and would allow 9,000 primarily Iranian man-children lying about being Afghans to stay in Sweden in order to finish their educations, for some inexplicable reason. I still cannot understand how that in some way was Sweden's problem, but we made it our problem anyway with this shit bill that got passed. They didn't have a right to asylum, they didn't have anywhere to live, they didn't have any money, and this is now being shown because they're homeless and they're living in the streets and they're dealing drugs for gangs. I'm just going to guess here that they're not getting a lot of studying done. So when our government wanted to virtue signal and show how good and merciful they are, the opinion of our council of legislation isn't worth shit. But now, on an issue as important as counterterrorism, then we should stop and think for a moment.
So now our government continues their long-standing tradition of fucking up royally, and we don't have a proper law in order to punish ISIS members. And it was designed by people who constantly leave me stunned by the fact that they actually are able to sleep at night, knowing about the nightmares that they're putting the Swedish people through. Personally, I would need enough medication to kill a horse and a fully stocked cupboard of hard liquor in order to nullify the feelings of self-contempt and disgust I'd experience upon seeing myself in a mirror. But hey, you know... That's just me. There's also been some very loose talk about a Swedish tribunal that is going to handle these terrorists, which is something I believe when I fucking see it. Because pardon my skepticism, I'm still waiting for those in charge to live up to their promise about deporting 80,000 illegals which they made back in 2016. I hope you enjoyed this video, that it didn't depress you, that it entertained you and motivated you to get out there and voice your opinion, because this is a very important issue that we need to start talking about in just in Europe in general. What to do with this vermin that is now streaming back into our countries. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and you can slam that little bell if you want to be notified when I upload more rantings and ravings. Until next time, take care of yourself, and thank you very much for watching. Bye.